Welcome to a quick lesson on using Google Forms. I'm not going to try and teach you everything, but to give you an overall. Google Forms is useful for presenting tests, giving exit tickets, letting students kind of see some answers, uh, for surveying answers of students. It has some great power. The easiest way to get there is to go into your Google Drive, uh, click the New button, click the More button, and then over here in the More area, it'll give you up Google Forms will be one of your options. Click that. So it'll bring you up to this. Now, if for some reason it brought you to the older forms, which it will if you're the first person, right across the top here will be a thing that says start using new Google Forms. Click that. The new Google Forms have a great presentation option that's not available in the older one. So name your form. I'm going to call mine the Alamo. And you can describe your form if you want. Uh, I just put that quickly. I will tell you one of the weird kinks in this is where I've got the Alamo here. You've got to go up here where it says Untitled Form and click it. It'll automatically transfer the name now. So you can insert questions. Um, these questions can be anything you want. There are several types. If you click in the question here, you get some options here with multiple choice. There's actually nine possible options. Short answer, which is limited. Paragraph, which you can limit or minimize. You can actually put that they have to have so many characters. Multiple choice. Check boxes. I will use a couple of those different ones right now. Uh, linear, multiple choice grid. These two are a little tricky, but not tough. And date and time have limited uses. Right now, I'm going to make my first question a multiple choice question. And my question is going to be, when did the battle for the Alamo take place? Question. And my option one, I'm going to select... 1836, which happens to be the right answer. I'm going to hit enter, or if you want, you can just go down and click the add option button. I just hit enter. Uh, I'm going to add some other dates 37, 1914, which happens to be the start of World War I, and uh, 1830, just to see if I can get it. Now, I would be worried if my first answer here was the right answer, but I've done something great here. Down here, you've got some options. The first one is to duplicate the question. If you're going to write another multiple choice question with four answers, this is pretty easy to do it. You can throw it away. You can make the question required. If you don't click this, then they can just hit submit. Down here is the real power on each question. Depending on the question type will depend on what menu options you get here. You can have a hint text below it if you need to add special directions. It'll you can have go to a section. Now, I'm not going to the sections. And you can have shuffle option order. This is great because each student now will see their question options. They will see them in a different order compared to the other students. That guarantees that they're not doing C your way out or AAA, whatever it is. Now, I've got my first question. I want to put another. To the right of this is a bar over here. Now, this bar is the insert stuff. You can add questions. You can add titles and descriptions. You can add an image or insert a video. It will always insert it one below whatever you're selected. So I'm going to add another question. I'm going to insert it, and it inserts it right below that first question. So here it is. My second question is going to be, who do you think was the most important defender? involved. And just for this one, I'm actually going to give them uh, some check boxes. So I'm going to give them some check boxes. Option one, I'm going to put William B. Travis. Option two, John J. Ball. Option three, James Bowie. Spells name. Option four, Davy Crockett. Or for your most people, Davy David Crockett. Option five, 
Robert White. I guess they were all there. So I've got check boxes. I put all these options. Now this would allow the students, if I just left this alone, they could check boxes. They could check them all. I'm going to go down here, make sure it's required. Here, remember I said it? Now, data validation is the key here. Data validation, I'm going to select it. And it says they must select at most, and I'm going to put a number one. So this will only allow them to select one of the five. But I could have them, they could select at most two. This way they have it. And uh, I'm going to put over here my custom error text. You can't pick more than two. So if they try to pick more than two, it's going to keep kicking it. And that's required. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to insert another question. My third question is I'm going to use a, a short answer one. What was the name of the commanding general on the Mexican side? So I'm going to change this to short answer. And then all they get is a short answer. I'm going to make it a required question. Over here, you have some options, and there's not really much you can data validate. I'm not going to data va validate this one. They can do that. Once I got it, I can actually now send my form. Whoops. Send my form, and I can collect the respondent order, the username. I can send it via email. I will say sending it via email is a messy question if you include the form. You can send anybody you want via email just by clicking the, the to tab, type in their address, type this up message. Don't include the form as an email. Uh, it'll send the link. You can also go here and just provide the link. If you're already using a website or a classroom site, you can use this link and provide it straight to it. That's the better way. All right. I'm going to pause a moment. I'm going to do some submissions of forms, and I'll bring you back. All right, so there I was. I went ahead and made some responses real quick. Now, if you're looking at the original form, you can click the responses tab. You'll see that you get a couple of choices up here. Uh, you can have a summary, which is what it, you can go individually to see how the students did. You can, over here, you can create a spreadsheet based on that. All you got to do is click that, and it'll create a spreadsheet. And you have some other options that say this other I've used this out of class and said new email responses that let me know when students are doing it. Right now, I want to look at the summary. And you'll see that when did the Alamo, it gives all the answers. This is, remember what I said about the students can preview other students' responses? This is what they'll see, this summary, after they commit it, which makes a great exit ticket or it makes a great uh, survey in class. You can see who said what. And the students don't have to fess up that they did the wrong answer, whatever. They can see the right answer versus their answer. I had three answers. You can see down here, most important defender. Everyone thought Travis was. A couple people thought Bow was because he was a sergeant. And a couple people thought just one person thought Davy Crockett. What was the name of the commanding general? It's a short answer. It gives some of them. So somebody didn't complete their answer here. They didn't get all the way. And we got some right answers. You can also do that individual. So you can see each person what they got. That's the power of it. It works incredibly well. So I hope you enjoyed this. I didn't embed, it, embed any videos, but that is one of the great ones. You can embed a video right at the beginning. Thanks.